Over the next 1,000 years, humanity might evolve to survive a car crash. Maybe we'll adapt to have text claws and a tech neck due to our excessive smartphone usage. Or perhaps we'll finally fuse with technology. In this episode, we're going to explore what scientists have theorized could be the next stage of human evolution. We'll find out what the perfect human might look like in the future. For our first future human, let's take a look at Tex Claw Mindy. She's got a hunched back, a hand with a permanently molded Tex Claw, and an unnaturally bent smartphone elbow. In 1,000 years, scientists predict this might be our reality. But why? Well, the humans alive today are wildly different from those who lived thousands or millions of years ago. We're no longer swinging on branches or running away from tigers. Instead, today's humans are mostly sitting down, eyes glued to a computer screen all day. This strains your neck and throws your spine out of balance. Humans were built to stand up straight, not be couch potatoes. But maybe future humans will evolve to have a hunchback, giving us an evolutionary advantage in computer work. And since we're always on our phones, we might develop traits like text claw and smartphone elbow. These traits could potentially pass on to the next generation, creating an army of Mindy-like humans obsessed with their phones, as if we're not already. We've already begun blending our bodies with technology. But one day it might be hard to tell where the human ends and the tech begins. I'm not talking about stereotypical cyborgs from movies. I'm talking about something much deeper. In the future, we won't just be fusing synthetic elements with our organs. We'll be merging them with our cells. Imagine a world where synthetic cells could be introduced into our bodies to fight off some of the nastiest diseases. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? Well, one company, Imix Biopharma, is already making it happen. Their first target is a life-threatening disease called AL amyloidosis. AL amyloidosis is caused by abnormal plasma cells in the bone marrow that harm vital organs like the heart, kidneys, and liver. Patients often suffer fatigue, weight loss, shortness of breath, and severe organ damage. But the worst part, by the time they're diagnosed, the disease is usually in its late stages, and there aren't any FDA-approved drugs for relapsed or refractory cases. That's where Imix Biopharma comes in. They've developed Anx 201, a card cell therapy that's more than just a treatment, it's a living medicine. Imix Biopharma genetically modifies a patient's cells to re-educate them, teaching them to seek out and destroy the disease cells. Unlike temporary solutions like pills, this is a one-time treatment where the cells keep fighting until they've eliminated the problem. In a clinical trial, NEXT 201 showed a 92% overall response rate, with some patients seeing long-term benefits. Imix Biopharma is also raising awareness with their Be Proactive and AL initiative which promotes early diagnosis and educates patients on available treatment options. By going after the root cause, Imix Biopharma isn't just treating symptoms, they're offering real hope for a cure to thousands of patients and their families. They're leading the charge into the future of medicine one cell at a time. But enough about microscopic miracles, you came here to see how weird humans might look in the coming centuries. A lot of those changes in appearance might come from a different type of cell or cell phones. See what I did there? What's wacky is how, in this tech-heavy world, your brain might evolve. Let's start with your skull. Studies have shown that radiofrequency radiation from smartphones might damage your brain. It could worsen your memory or affect your cognitive skills. So Mindy was given a thicker skull to protect her brain from potential radiation via phones. Unfortunately, the brain itself might shrink. Yeah, it doesn't sound great. I can barely remember where I put my keys, and this could make it worse. Brains today are already much smaller than they used to be. Before the dawn of civilization, human brains had to do a lot more work. Without advanced weapons, we had to use our brains to save ourselves from predators. Without farming, we had to remember where the best fruit trees were. But today, technology does a lot of that thinking for us. We've got calculators, Google Maps, and now AI to even do our programming or homework. Our lives today are simpler and safer. With AI, this trend of not having to think as much will continue into the future. What about our overall size? Well, this is a bit of a toss-up because of two opposing trends. On one hand, life is no longer about the survival of the fittest in terms of size. Humans don't need to be big and strong to fend off tigers or other humans. Instead, financial savvy is more crucial for survival. However, 
humans still face threats, though they're different now. We've got new predators ones we've made ourselves, climate change, ongoing wars, and the looming potential of nuclear apocalypse. These threats are likely to continue. So how could humanity evolve in response? Surviving climate change might happen in two ways. One group may amass wealth and use it to protect themselves from the effects of climate change. These people might evolve into hunchbacked, tech-savvy humans, running to their underground bunkers stocked with caviar and sparkling water while tsunamis rage or radiation annihilates everything. The second group, those not lucky enough to hang out in bunkers, might evolve physical traits to survive. To see what these traits could look like, let's look at a unique future human, Crashproof Graham. Meet Crashproof Graham. Scientists built him to survive a car crash. And come to think of it, being caught in extreme weather due to climate change is kind of like surviving a crash. Graham's brain is encased in a thicker skull with more fluid to cushion it, and more ligaments to hold it in place. His neck is short and thick, or better yet he has no neck at all, which would reduce the risk of injury. Graham also has stronger ribs and thicker skin to protect him from high-impact crashes and cuts. Another unique trait is his joints, which can bend in multiple directions, giving him a greater chance of surviving impacts from different angles. Of course, it may take longer than just 1,000 years for these traits to evolve. But as climate change accelerates, humans may adapt more quickly, especially the billions of people who will face harsher elements. The only downside for crash-proof Graham? He might have a hard time getting a date. Is there another version of the future human who could evolve to be better than today's model? Perhaps modern gene splicing techniques could help create a new, perfect version of us, one who's a little more attractive than Tex Claw Mindy or Crash Proof Graham. Enter Anatomically Amazing Alice. Created by Dr. Alice Roberts, Alice is designed to fix the imperfections evolution left behind. Her perfect body features octopus-like eyes for better vision. She would also have improved hearing by fixing the tiny hair cells in our ears that deteriorate with age. Instead of trying to make those little cells regrow, we could just get bigger ears. Why no, like a cat. These would be better at amplifying sound. And I gotta add, they look pretty cool. Then there's the throat. Perfect Alice has two separate pipes, one for air and another for food. Fine by me. Okay. And now for something special that's got to do with babies. No, not that. The human pelvis evolved to support us properly while walking upright but it definitely doesn't have room for one thing, large-headed babies, which is what us humans tend to have. This makes childbirth pretty difficult. So I've heard. The perfect human body would borrow a trick from the kangaroo. How about a little pouch? This way we could give birth to smaller babies at a younger stage and have them mature in our pouch, just like marsupials do. Then there's our skin. If you're fair-skinned like me, you can get sunburnt and be at risk of skin cancer. Yikes. One solution is to just go for darker skin, which doesn't burn as easily. But even cooler might be to borrow another trait from the octopus. It can change its skin color. Now, with that trait, light-skinned people can keep their light color in winter and get darker in the summer for protection. Finally, the human leg could do with a fix. They're slow and tough to move. Ostrich-like legs might be the solution. We make the lower leg less muscly and make the feet light so they're better equipped to run. The final touches are shorter, chimpanzee-like spines, which are less likely to get compressed as we age. But sorry, that means no slender waists for anyone. Hearts with more interlinked arteries, so you never get a heart attack. And air sacs, like what birds have, rather than our lungs. Anatomically amazing Alice looks pretty cool. If scientists begin to splice some genes, we just might get to this point in the next 1,000 years. But wait a minute. With advances in biomedical research, we've already begun fusing technology with the human body. What are some of these modifications we're likely to see in the future? Meet transhumanic Tim, whose body is part human, part machine. They've merged with technology so they can see better, hear better, remember more, run faster, fight disease better, and even more amazingly, live forever. Maybe Tim will wear a modern hearing aid that will not only amplify sounds that are far away, but also record sound and create white noise. Today, bionic eyes help blind people see. They're surgically implanted devices that improve sensitivity to light so that people can distinguish between shapes and tell the difference between a knife and a fork. But in the future, 
These kinds of implants will help transhumanic Tim see things they've never seen before. X-ray vision can become Tim's reality. Tomorrow's enhanced human might also have implanted devices that improve memory. In 1,000 years, maybe we'll all have that skill. Today, scientists are making prosthetic devices implanted in the brain that can decode how you store memories, then apply neurostimulation to help the person retrieve those memories later. As the technology gets better, we'll each have a built-in encyclopedia, and our ability to fight diseases will be better than ever. Not only will this help humans live longer, but potentially forever not living forever in your regular human body, but by uploading your brain to a server. Now, this would be incredibly complex because of the sheer volume of information in our brains, but let's say we somehow cracked that code. We managed to find a way to upload all of our information to some storage space. What's next? Assuming that humans 1,000 years from now aren't regenerating our limbs, where would our brains go? Would they sit in a computer? Or go into a new robotic body? That will be the last stage of transhumanic Tim, and it'll last forever. Now, all these evolutionary upgrades are pretty incredible, but can we do better? Okay, now that we've learned a bit more about what the next 1,000 years will bring, it's time to build our own version of the perfect future human. Let's take the bits we like the best. Physically speaking, this human will be taller. Yeah, the challenges with climate change may favor smaller humans for a little while, but better nutrition and natural selection will push for greater height. I like the bigger eyes and feline ears from Alice. I'm not sure everyone needs x-ray vision, but maybe if you're going to med school, you get equipped with bionic eyes. Our future human definitely needs a thicker skull protecting a smaller brain, but with much bigger brain power because they're equipped with a memory-enhancing prosthetic that gives them a photographic memory. This makes school a breeze and puts Google Maps out of business. Plus, it has another advantage. Since we future humans will be able to remember a lot, we're not on the phone all the time, so no text claw for future human no hunchback. Both crash-proof Graham and anatomically amazing Alice had noted improvements with legs and feet, so our future human will have those knees that bend any which way, slimmer ostrich-like calves, and lighter springy feet. I'm also going with a set of multipurpose nanobots that roam inside the future human body. They can decimate a tumor, reduce inflammation where they see it, and generally enhance the body's immune system. All right, our future human looks pretty cool, ready to take on the terrifying challenges of 3000 AD. Like, for instance, what if there were a catastrophic situation where land and water switched places overnight? Would our human survive? 